Welcome to an overview of the nursing process. As we begin our exploration of the fundamentals of nursing, we need to spend a little bit of time defining what we call the nursing process. The nursing process is a systematic problem-solving approach that is really not overly different than other problem-solving or decision-making approaches that we use throughout our daily lives. However, the focus of the nursing process is our clients or, or our patients. And the nursing process really serves to guide our practice and to help us provide safe, individualized nursing care. In this short PowerPoint, we're going to define the nursing process a little bit and then briefly overview each stage of the nursing process. And then in subsequent PowerPoints, we'll look at each stage individually. So again, when we're talking about the nursing process, it is a systematic process. It is a problem-solving approach. And the goal of the nursing process is to really design and deliver individualized nursing care. The nursing process was first introduced in the 1960s. It really took a hold in the 1970s, and it continues to be modified. You'll notice in different sources when you read things, maybe the phases have some modification in terms of the names. Some of them have five um, steps, some have six, but basically it remains um, pretty much the same and is a foundational tool for us to identify and treat human responses to potential or actual health problems. We're looking specifically at those human responses on our patient or client's responses to health issues. Um, that client is often an individual, but it can also be a family, a community, and even a population. We are looking for those human responses to actual health problems illnesses and, and actual threats to health that are occurring, but also looking for potential health problems. Those things that we might see as risks for um, uh, unhealth in the future. Um, and that's really in keeping with what we see in nursing as this our goal to not only help ill people get well, but also to help healthy people stay healthy. So we're looking both at actual health problems and potential health problems through the use of this nursing process. Uh, one benefit that we see from using the nursing process is that when we all use the same approach, our communication is clearer, and that really fosters continuity of care from nurse to nurse, and that, in turn, gives us much more quality care. So let's take a look here at the different steps or phases of the nursing process. Here we have in picture format on the left hand side of the screen and then in list format on the right you will see starting with assessment, then moving to diagnosis, outcome identification, planning, implementation, and evaluation. So you can see I've highlighted in red those first letters, and you will often hear the acronym ADOPI to describe the steps of the nursing process. So the picture indicates something that's really important, and that is that these phases do overlap one another in practice. But we generally start right at the top with assessment and then move through in order from assessment to diagnosis, outcome identification, planning, implementation, and evaluation. That'll happen at different speeds. Obviously in an emergency situation that's going to happen very fast. In a, uh, maybe a, a different situation where we're looking at problems over time, that would happen quite slowly. And there is a good deal of, of overlap. But it's important, even with that overlap, for us to understand each one of these steps of the nursing process to know what's accomplished, what's the goal of each of those phases. It's also important to keep in mind this process really requires critical thinking and it is in fact an excellent tool for critical thinking and I think it will help you to really structure your own thinking as a nurse as you begin to adopt this as, as an excellent tool for yourself. So let's look briefly at each one of these steps starting with assessment. 
Assessment, as you know, is gathering data or information, and that's going to be focused, again, on our client. So we might be looking at an individual, a family, or a community, but we're lo really looking in the assessment phase at collecting data, validating that data, and getting that data organized or clustering that data in a way that really helps us to, to move forward with it. We want to utilize multiple sources, but as much as possible, our patient should be the primary source of that assessment data. The next phase is diagnosis, and this is really a key step where we identify what the problem is. Um, we critically analyze and interpret our collected data, and we begin to draw conclusions uh, uh, based on that data. What, are this, what does this patient need? What kind of problems do they have? What are we seeing in their human responses? So that is phase two, or the diagnosis phase. Then based on our diagnosis, we then develop outcomes. So our third phase is outcome development, or goal setting, where we really establish priorities and set our outcome goals as much as possible, we want to include the patient in that process. We want them on that same page with us. The next phase, four, is planning. <clears throat> and here, in this phase, we really develop strategies to correct or minimize or prevent each problem. What do we need to do to achieve our outcome goal or goals? We want to make sure that we record that in a plan of care. We want to make sure that we are communicating that well. So that's an important part of our planning phase. Then we move to implementation, where we actually carry out the interventions. So this includes both the initiation and the completion of our interventions. That plan of care continues to be available for all members of the healthcare team and it guides our nursing actions as well as collaborative interventions with other healthcare team members. Very important to continue good documentation during this phase. We need to record what care is given on the appropriate documents. Then we move to our evaluation phase. This is where we look and say, have the outcome goals been achieved? If I identified a certain outcome based on a certain problem, have the, that, have the outcome goals been met? This is a last phase, but it actually kind of loops us right back around to the beginning because really evaluation can be looked at as a reassessment. And that's why we continue to have this ongoing process. So this picture, very similar to one that we showed before, but in um, pictorial manner, kind of says our nice, neat, tidy process that moves from assessment and all the way around to evaluation actually has a lot of interrelatedness. So we're going to look at each of these separate distinct phases, but in actual practice, one phase is not necessary necessarily complete before you move on to the next phase and you'll see that each one of these phases affects the others. Not everybody uses the same terminology but I think that you will find that no matter who it is and what system they use in terms of a problem-solving approach you'll find a very similar um, pattern. So some people might, um, instead of using that Adopi, kind of look at their problem-solving approach in this four-step way. They might look at the patient's present health status and then think about what the desired health status might be for that patient. Think, how can I help this patient? And then finally, did the interventions work that I selected? But if we overlay our nursing process words with that, you can see that the patient's present health status really is our assessment and diagnosis. The desired health status aligns with outcome identification. 
how can I help this patient really is about the planning and implementation and then did the interventions work would be um, akin to our evaluation phase. So you can see that the language is not the, the piece that's so important, but that process of thinking about that process. And so we will continue to use that Adobe language, the nursing process, to help us throughout this course as we um, look at different nursing problems, fundamentals of nursing, and how we're going to approach those, what kind of interventions we're going to choose, and then how we're going to evaluate that all centered, of course, on our patients. The last thing that I want to point out is that, that some of you might be familiar with what's called a functional health pattern assessment tool that um, kind of looks at an individual from a very nursing perspective. And the different functional health patterns are on this slide, actually around the outside. Um, and some of these are concepts that we're going to spend a lot of time looking at. Concepts such as sleep and rest or elimination, activity and exercise. Um, some psychosocial concepts as well, dealing with roles and relationships, values and beliefs, uh, coping, stress tolerance, cognition and perception. Um, these different functional health patterns are just ways that we look at individuals um, as we are, are um, assessing what they might have in terms of needs. And the nursing process really can interface with that whole functional health pattern. We're very familiar with this framework as it guides our assessment process. And we'll be looking at that framework also to guide us in setting outcome goals, in choosing appropriate interventions, and in evaluating. So our next PowerPoint will move into the assessment phase and look at that in more detail.